So today we'll look at the pricing of lithium batteries, both the upfront and the long term, so the cost per use of lithium batteries, and compare it to the lead acid conventional batteries. Most of the times the information available comes from the suppliers or the manufacturers of lithium batteries. So you could say that there's a possible bias in these kind of uh, comparisons. I'll organize information in five different sections. So first we'll look at the upfront investment cost. So what does it cost you to buy these lithium batteries? In the second topic, we'll look at the risks or the battery failure risk and how it's covered by the warranties. The third section will look at what kind of lifetime can you expect of lithium batteries? So the service life of them. We'll then look at the cost per use. So if you take the price of lithiums and spread them out over the lifetime, what does it cost you to operate these batteries? And then the last sections, I'll wrap up with a few conclusions and specific tips regarding pricing of lithium batteries. By the way, if I'm using the word lithium batteries, I'm also referring to lithium iron phosphate batteries. And if I'm saying conventional or lead acids, I'm referring to the lead acid based batteries, including the flooded, the AGM and the gel batteries. So let's start by looking at the most painful part of lithium batteries, the upfront investment. So the price of lithium batteries really varies according to the capacity of the batteries. So you can find values between $100 up to $4,000 for the larger batteries. So in order for me to give you a usable figure that you can use to compare batteries, I'll give you the dollar price per usable watt hour. So before I give you the values, I'd like to explain you two different things. So the prices I'm giving you are already adjusted according to the amount of energy that you can actually use out of the battery. So for lithium batteries, I'm using the 80% rule. So you can use 80% out of the total um, capacity of the battery. And I'm comparing this to 50% for conventional lead ace batteries. So the price I'm giving you is already corrected according to the amount of energy that you can use as compared to the total amount of energy that is inside of the battery. The second thing is that I'm giving you the prices per usable watt hour. So what is a watt hour? If you would draw one watt of power out of a battery and you would do this for one hour, you have withdrawn one watt hour of energy. So keeping these two things in mind, the price for lithium batteries is on average $1 per usable watt hour. If you'd compare this to conventional lead acid based batteries, the price there is 25 cents per usable watt hour. So now let's look at the risks that you're running with lithium batteries and how this is typically covered by the warranties. There are basically two types of warranty, which is the cumulative energy output warranty and the warranty on material and workmanship. So the cumulative energy output warranty refers to the amount of energy that you can withdraw out of the battery over the complete lifetime. Since lithium batteries, you don't have to charge them all the way up to 100%. What you can do is you can discharge them, charge them a little bit, discharge them again. So the total amount of energy that you would discharge from the battery, this would fall under the cumulative energy output warranty. So this would be a really great warranty to have, but with the majority of the lithium batteries, this warranty is not included in the policies. The second warranty regarding defects in materials or workmanship for lithium batteries is typically between two to three years. If you compare this to lead acid batteries, they can go up to five years. So the other thing I would like to mention regarding the warranties on lithium batteries is regarding the fine print, which in my opinion often really weakens whatever is covered. Some policies will tell you, yes, we'll provide you warranty, but only up to 50% of the performance of what we initially promised you the battery could deliver. So I'm not sure how useful this is. Or fine print that indicates, well, if the battery would fail within the warranty period, then we'll provide you with a 50% discount if you buy a new product. So this is very interesting, I think. So two small conclusions that I would like to make regarding the warranty on lithium batteries is that it seems that since the technology is still relatively young compared to lead acid batteries, the policies don't provide that much coverage. So often the conventional batteries will give you more warranty. And the second thing is that it seems you're properly covered for any manufacturing defects which would normally show up within 6 to 12 months after purchase. Though regarding the service life of the batteries, how long it will last, there's no proper warranty on average. So if the battery would last 5 years instead of 10, that's too bad for you. Which brings me to the service life, so the lifetime that you can expect of a lithium battery. So if you would use 80% of the capacity of the battery on average, and you would cycle once a day and do this every day of the year, your battery will last between 7 and 12 years, which I think is just really impressive. 
If you compare this to conventional lead acid based batteries, you can expect a lifetime between 3 to 12 years. So there's a really wide range here. It really depends on how you design your system, how you install it, and what kind of quality batteries you buy. So as you're doing your research and you're looking into different kind of batteries, I have a tip for you here. So in order for the industry to tell you how long the battery is going to last, we need to have a common point where we can say, okay, now the battery is finished and it needs to be replaced. This is called the end of lifetime of a battery. So the conventional way of describing this is that when your battery can only hold 80% of its capacity compared to when it was new, then the industry indicates this as, you know, the battery is finished and it needs to be replaced. It doesn't mean it doesn't work anymore, it just says that the capacity has significantly been reduced. Now the interesting thing is that when you want to compare the conventional batteries to the lithium batteries, sometimes the lithium battery manufacturers, instead of using the 80% value, they're using the 70 or 60% value. So when they're doing this, it seems like the battery is performing way better, but you're not doing the apple to apple comparison. Since we know that lithium batteries require a higher upfront investment, but they also claim to last much longer than conventional batteries, let's now look at the actual cost per use over the lifetime of the lithium battery. So I'll share with you two different things. I'll tell you how I normally carry out my battery comparison reports, and I'll tell you what the values are that, are that I typically find for the batteries that are available in the market. So when I create battery comparison reports, I'd look at least at five different things. So the first thing is that you have to decide how fast you discharge the battery because the available amount of energy that you can withdraw out of the battery, so the battery capacity, really depends on how fast you discharge it. If you discharge it faster, then your battery capacity will be less. So the second thing is that you have to decide how far on average you discharge the battery because this will then decide the amount of cycles and therefore the expected lifetime that you can get out of the battery. So once you have these three values, then you calculate the total amount of energy that you typically withdraw out of a battery, then take the price of the batteries, and with these five values, you crunch them together, you get one value, and then once you have these values for the different type of batteries, you can actually carry out a apple to apple comparison between all different kinds of batteries. So before I'll give you the values that I typically find during battery comparison, I would like to clarify two things. So the first thing is that the values that I'll give you are pretty direct values. So I do not include any maintenance costs, installation costs, etc. So it's a very direct value. So the second thing is that the dollar value that I'll give you is already corrected according to the expected lifetime of the battery, so the amount of cycles. Or to put it in different words, it is the dollar value per the total amount of electrical energy that you can withdraw out of the battery over its complete lifetime. So keeping this information in mind, the price that you can expect for lithium batteries is between 0.3 and 0.4 dollars per kilowatt hours. If you compare this to conventional lead acid batteries, you can expect a value of between 0.1 and 0.2 dollars per kilowatt hours. So these values tell us that while lithium batteries are more expensive, but they last a lot longer than conventional batteries, the price per usage of lithium batteries is still higher than conventional lead acid batteries. At the same time, the price gap between the worst performing lithiums and the highest performing lead acids is pretty small. So this brings us to the conclusions on this video. So lithium batteries require four times the amount of upfront investment compared to lead acid, and they are still slightly more expensive in the per usage cost compared to the conventional batteries. And for lithium batteries, if you would use the batteries all the way until the end of lifetime, if you'd compare them to the worst choices of conventional batteries out there in the market, then the significant technical advantage of lithium batteries come at a price increment of between 50 to 100% compared to lead acid. Now, and something else that would be good for you to be aware of is that since lithium technology is still relatively young compared to lead acid technology, the industry is making a lot of improvements each year. So on average, the price for lithium batteries drops 7% per year. So that's uh, good news. So now a question for you. If there's something else that you'd like to learn about off-grid energy systems, let me know in the comments below. And I'll use this as inspiration to provide more videos for you and for others. And of course, remember, you've got all these great options. You can like, subscribe, share, you name it. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.